So SSL Family Dad posted a video the other day talking about how one of his greatest sources of money from his farm is actually selling baby goats. And he tends to sell these baby goats as pets because he can get a really high pet price. Now the high price he's talking about is $200, which is insanely affordable to me because in my area, people sell pet goats and they're like 400, 500, 600, 800 dollars. They're like, it's like extreme. And you know, I, that's what drives me nuts about buying livestock. And the big issue I have with livestock is it's, at least in my area, I can't talk about all areas because obviously wherever he is, you know, livestock is livestock, even if it's a pet. But around here, livestock is usually sold as a pet and therefore it's treated like a, a pure, you know, pure bread, fancy, you know, like snickerdoodle or whatever they call those fancy dogs that they have because, you know, everything is treated like that. So everything has this really, really high price tag where you're paying like, you know, some people pay thousands of dollars for dogs, for example. And like I get registered bloodlines and having good stock, breeding stock, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're really just in it for like livestock, it can be really, really frustrating to get goats and sheep around here. And I ran into this when I bought my goats and it's, uh, and I'm kind of running into it again as I research sheep breeders. So I have, so I look around, I ask around trying to find a good price, but they're all like these really high exorbitant prices. And that's just because of the nature of the state I'm in. I'm in a state that is not really agricultural. So that raises the price on everything, not only the animals themselves and what they can get for them, because you have a lot of suburbanites who are like, I'd like to have a pet goat. I'm willing to pay $800 for this goat or 1600 in the case of getting two of them, two of them. And there are people, so many people are willing to pay these exorbitant pet prices that if you're just looking to get livestock, it's like really, really difficult to find something that's affordable to really start your herd with or your flock or whatever particular animal you're going for. Heck, even chickens locally are pretty high in price. But another part of that too is there is a cost of care because we're not a huge agricultural state. There, are, there aren't a lot of places producing hay and straw through, you know, cereal grain production. We just don't have that. So it's gonna be shipped in from all over or you're going to like the local farmer exchange and paying exorbitant prices for bales of hay or, or, or bags of feed that get brought in. So everything about having animals in the state is expensive. So that raises things. And, and part of the reason that has informed my experience with livestock and why I tend to be like, like don't bother with the livestock because it's not really worth it. But that's coming from my point of view where it becomes so expensive to buy those inputs. I mean, I can make an argument that if you're really looking for a self-sufficient homestead, you shouldn't get any animal that you have to import something. And I've talked about that, that in the past, about how, you know, I take issue with a lot, a lot of people saying larger livestock is worth it because if you don't have the pasture to produce your own hay or whatever, then you're not really that much of a self-sufficient homestead. I mean, let's be real about that. But I've made that argument in other videos and not entirely the point I'm trying to make here. Mostly I'm just talking about how it's frustrating in my area to get involved in any sort of livestock because not only the expense of having to bring those inputs in, but just like the cost of the animals themselves, it's like insane. Like I was saying, it's, every, it's, all, it's all like, like a, it's like an exotic pet to have. And that's what people sell the, the, the kids as, the, the, you know, the lambs or the kids or whatever you're trying to buy. So it's, it's really frustrating. And that's why, I mean, if nothing else, that's a big reason why it's hard to get into livestock here because it's, it's, you can't just like get, you're like, I just want to raise some animals that'll be hardy and produce children that I potentially eat or whatever. Um, you just don't have those options. I mean, there are livestock options and kind of like the four flung corners of the state. Nothing that's really convenient to me. And from what I understand, the prices are still pretty high up there. So I don't know, what is a homesteader to do in a state that is not really built for homesteading? It's not organized for homesteading. And that can be really frustrating. And that's why I think, I think it's safe to say that's why so much of my opinion is geared away from livestock or at least larger livestock and focus more on very small animals. So unfortunately that's the reality. I'm super jealous that wherever he is, that he, I, that people around there are buying these pet goats for $200. Cause I'd be snapping up those goats like crazy left and right. I mean, if I really truly want to do goats, which is anyway, topic for another video, but, uh, I would kill for those prices around here, but it's not, but I mean, the, 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 Good side of that, I guess, is that if you're willing to put the money up front and you produce your own kids, you can charge a bunch of high prices. But that's the other weird thing about the area that I'm in 
is that that's not necessarily a guarantee because you have a set number of breeders for the different breeds and the different types of animals and the market's already kind of crowded. So if I come in and I try to sell goats, you know, goat babies, you know, the person down the street might be selling them for, you know, $600. And I might be like, yeah, I can get $600, but I might not be able to sell them. And that's the big problem. It's like not, it's no guarantee that I'm going to be able to get rid of them. In fact, a lot of people, breeders and sort of secondary owners end up having extra goats and not being able to do anything with them. So they end up going to the auctions or going somewhere else, which still aren't usually sold pretty cheap, uh, pretty cheap, cheap. <laughs> Um, but it's, I don't know, it's a weird cycle to get into and it's a weird system. And that's why it's like, I, I tended to shy away from those. You know, I keep my eyes open, you know, maybe someday for the right time in the right place, I can prey upon somebody who miscalculated their own homestead or their own ability to take care of animals or their own, the cost. And I can like snag up those animals and it'll maybe at a right time and I'm ready to have like pasture and infrastructure in place, et cetera, et cetera, for those animals. But that, um, I don't know, we'll see. But in the meanwhile, it's just really not financially worth it to get into livestock, I'm discovering, at least in the area that I'm in. I mean, a lot of that has to do with, you know, I live in a state that's expensive, everything's expensive, you know, just cost of living's expensive, but also, you know, you know I'm in, in a state where wages are, are generally higher. So I guess people can afford to buy luxury goats. <laughs> so in any case, I just kind of want to ramble about that because it kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of surprised me and got me thinking watching that video. Um, SSL Family Dad is a channel I do recommend if you are into the farming homesteading thing, which I assume you are if you're watching this video. But uh, so definitely check him, check him out. I'll put a link in the description box below. And um, anyway, thank you for listening to me ramble. Thank you for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey.